As you probably know, after one year of negotiations, the 14 agency international space exploration coordinated group agreed on a global exploration roadmap to coordinate program to those destinations where humans may one day live and work. A major achievement on which we will have a report from Mr. Yoshiyuki Asegawa, Executive Director of JAXA, and Mr. William Gerstmeyer, NASA Associate Administrator and uh, of the Human Exploration Operations Directory. Thank you. Please. Good morning. Uh, Hasegawa from JAXA. Uh, I'm uh, dedicated in uh, ISS programs and also the lunar uh, and the planetary exploration program, both together. And uh, thank you very much for coming in the early in the morning. So uh, maybe 30 minutes around that, uh, we would like to ex explain the current situation of the global exploration roadmap and the future activities uh, with the international partners, including the NASA. So uh, first of all, I would like to show up the uh, uh, kind of status and history. Which one? No? This one? Oh, yeah. And today, many, many agencies are active uh, conducting and planning for the human robotics uh, space exploration activities, missions. But uh, uh, exploration program and the project are very much expensive. Uh, any agency, including even the United States of America, cannot afford everything. And so uh, uh, each agency uh, are getting it together in uh, uh, one uh, kind of the, uh, association and to make up the, the big goals. So background of the uh, global exploration roadmap uh, histories, uh, especially the body is uh, ISEC G. The short, please look at the, this slide. In uh, 2007, uh, 14 space agencies developed a vision for the global coordinated human and robotics exploration of the destinations where human may one day live and work. So the 14 agencies uh, are consisting of the ISS uh, main uh, core agencies, 15 countries, five agencies, uh, US, uh, NASA, Roscosmos, ESA, JAXA, and CSA, five agencies and consisting of the 15 countries. And plus, uh, we have uh, 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 more uh, it, countries like uh, uh, Aze, Italy, and uh, Knez, France, and CNSA, China, and uh, Cicero, Australia, and uh, DLL, Germany, and also Israel, India, Kali, Kolia, uh, and the UKSA, and, 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 and NASA is uh, Ukraine. So uh, combined in 14 space agencies. And uh, the International Space Exploration Coordination Group that was uh, created to share information on exploration activities and plans and work collectively uh, in order to advance the global exploration strategy. So this forum is not a government uh, body. It's a non-binding kind of the co uh, consensus-based uh, bodies. And uh, next one. Uh, 2007 May time frame is the first product of the Global Exploration Strategy Framework for Coordination. This is already uh, released and uh, 
published. Then after that, sorry for, for that. Which? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, ICFG was setting, setting up the November 2007 and has a strategy uh, steadily in increased involvement, its value to participate in agencies. And uh, this paper, our uh, book, this kind of the, uh, small one, but described the vision for the coordinated human and robotics exploration of our solar system. And uh, I stress the importance of the international cooperation to meet the challenge. And uh, uh, objectives working group and architecture and engineering, something like that, the working group is under this uh, uh, coordination group. Then uh, each uh, working group uh, have been a uh, uh, very uh, best effort to make uh, some kind of the product. Uh, that is a global exploration roadmap. So September uh, time frame, uh, August, uh, the end of the August, we, uh, for 10 agencies, got together in, uh, in Kyoto in Japan to review the, this product. And uh, uh, the product itself is uh, uh, okay to go forward or not. So uh, discuss and talking in uh, whole days. Then uh, we published uh, this uh, global expression roadmap September version to the uh, release to the, uh, the public. And the website is, uh, it, you can uh, monitor or, or check the website monitoring. And then uh, uh, this product is a kind of the technical forum product. Then uh, uh, each agency uh, must be uh, uh, Consult, uh, consulting with the government itself uh, to need to judge by the, uh, it's okay to go forward or modification, <coughs> or something like that. And then back to the, uh, our uh, ISGG members and uh, discuss, and the, uh, our plan is uh, one year is discussing and uh, debating and updated to the next version. So uh, iteration is going uh, our body and agency political policies and plans. And next one, a framework for the agency. The goal of exploration roadmap, a framework for the agency level planning discussions. So we pick up the three goals and objectives for human space exploration. And second, long range exploration scenarios. Design reflex mission is required and what is the, the capability to build up uh, that uh, missions. So the third, near-term opportunity for the coordination and cooperation. Uh, we need uh, some kind of the, uh, the verification or validation on orbit or ground. So uh, uh, option is the use of the ISS for the exploration, uh, kind of the, as a kind of the test bed for the exploration. And second, the robotics precursor missions. Uh, it's amend spacecraft and check the robotics or uh, uh, surface moving, something like that. And advanced technology is required, space systems, infrastructure development, communication, uh, spacecraft data gathering, and also analog activities in on ground, such as the loba moving, such and such. And next, exploration theme and common goals. So each agency are uh, interested in each field, not uh, totally common. Uh, so it, agencies, each agency has each idea or interesting. So we need some kind of the common goal. So we discussed uh, in the working group, so make up uh, common is maybe such a uh, field. Uh, so one is a search for the life, extend, extend the human presence, and development, develop the exploration technology and the capability build up and perform science for support to human exploration. Also stimulate the economic expansion industry's uh, involvement and the performance space earth and uh, applied science. Science field is important and engage the public in exploration and also the enhance earth safety. So such field is maybe common. We are consensus. Okay, next 
from next slide, we hand over to the Gessemeyer <laughs> to more details. Okay, again, uh, as Hasegawa Sun stated, this is a pretty big step to have uh, 14 uh, agencies essentially agree on some basic concepts or basic framework to go forward. Um, and this is in the document in the GER. And we essentially have uh, basically two paths. Uh, uh, one, they all both begin at the ISS and low Earth orbit, which kind of makes sense. Then one path heads to an asteroid, then to moon, and then to Mars. The other path, uh, again, goes first to the moon, then goes to an asteroid, then goes to Mars. And the general thinking of the group was that, that Mars is the ultimate destination, is the ultimate place that we need to go, but we need to get some technology, some infrastructure in place, some hardware, some systems, some operations concepts in place before we're really ready to go to Mars. So then there's a couple different paths to go through these. And, and again, these are providing a, a basically a framework uh, at, as we go forward. This is some of the detail that sits in the document. I won't go over this with you uh, in any detail, but I think the thing here to, s to see is that there's been quite a bit of planning that kind of lays out the, the basic phases, and you can see that, you know, basically at the, at the, at the top of the chart across here. Um, there's the ISS utilization capability demonstration phase. There's the uh, cis-lunar that's in the, uh, the Earth-Moon uh, environment servicing and development and in deep, deep space exploration. And then the general idea is to kind of build off of each one of these phases and then ultimately uh, move forward. And again, uh, we've also defined down at the bottom some key enabling capabilities. And these are some candidate ideas for agencies to think about of things they may want to develop or put forward as they're ready to go uh, do these activities. Again, this uh, is, again, some, some more, more details. Um, again, I won't spend much time with this. You can read the document and see where they are. Um, and I think that's all I'll say on this chart. You know, again, uh, near-term coordination and cooperation is really important. How can we make some real tangible advances fairly soon? And clearly one thing we can do is use the ISS for exploration, look at ways that we can branch off of uh, ISS. Can we use some of the life support systems on ISS to, to develop, uh, you know, long-duration life support systems? Can we use station as a as a concept or test bed. Um, we're going to try this summer to do some activities where we'll have some time delays simulated as we would on Mars with the crew for a very short period of time um, to, to get some experience, operational experience of operating at uh, distances to Mars. Um, we're also going to go look for robotic precursor missions. We're going to reach out to the Science Mission Directorate and see if we can work uh, with them, at least within NASA, to try to find areas where we can cooperate and, and get more of a united uh, approach going forward. And, and what I see it is it's not just exploration uh, for human exploration or just not robotic exploration. It's really exploration in the broadest sense where we need to combine the robotic activity as well as the, the human experience together. You can see uh, the Orion capsule down in the left-hand corner. We think that plays a role. Uh, we look to the other um, other partners and other agencies to look for things that they want to combine. We, we clearly need some advanced technologies and we want to do some analog activities, both uh, terrestrially and potentially on ISS. You know, the community engagement, how can you get involved in uh, the Global Exploration Roadmap? I think the best way for you to do that is to, to make your inputs to your uh, participating agencies, or you can go to the website that's listed here on this chart. But I think it's important that, uh, that we get a broad uh, consensus and a broad involvement of a lot of folks in this activity. So you definitely should make your comments known as, as we go forward. There'll be an IAF, AIAA Global Exploration Conference uh, with ISIG uh, co uh, contribution on May 20th uh, through the 22nd of 2012 in Washington, D.C. Um, we're also going to do a NASA GER community workshop November 14th and 15th in San Diego. And these will be open discussions on these scenarios and roadmaps that we talked about. We really need broad uh, inputs uh, to those to, so we can take them down to the next level as Hasegawa-san showed in the, in the first set of charts. We want to refine these and, and move forward as we get ready to publish the next uh, Global Exploration Roadmap next year. Again, uh, there's a website that you can go out to and you can uh, actually see kind of what's available. This is an interactive website, so as you mouse over these various activities, 
you could see details of, of uh, EVA activities or details of asteroid activities, et cetera. So this is an interactive way that you can go to the website and actually uh, interact with the roadmap. It's not just a static roadmap. This was a thing that the, um, that the ISIG folks put together that's a, a pretty nice way to actually get some details below these various concepts. And you can see the information in more of an interactive and, and global manner. Again, uh, this is the uh, kind of uh, overall roadmap with um, some activities occurring. You know, what we tried to show here was that there's some activities occurring in the, the moon environment, like the GRAIL mission that uh, NASA had just launched to go look at the gravitation field of the moon. We think that has important data to inform us on what we're going to do here. We have some more uh, missions clearly to Mars. We've got uh, uh, Mars uh, Science Laboratory being launched in November. We got Phobos Grund. Uh, being launched from uh, RSA in November. So, so the point here is we tried to show on one chart all these activities that are tied to exploration. So you can, you can see where the various missions are, where we're doing some asteroid missions with ESA um, and potentially a NASA asteroid mission out in the 2019 timeframe. But you can see how these other activities also fold in. You can also see down at the bottom some of the enabling capabilities we've put together. So we're trying to take advantage of what's available, what's being done for exploration, to, to build a, a, a complete uh, or to flesh out the roadmap so we can really build a concrete and real plan to move forward. And uh, again, this is the, uh, the brochure from uh, last year, but I think it's really about exploring together. We need your comments. We need your thoughts as we go forward. Uh, this isn't going to be um, a single agency activity. This is going to clearly be multi-agency. Um, I think it's a tremendous step forward to see the 14 agencies come together and get the roadmap that you saw on the previous page. And, and that wasn't easily done, and now we can take the next steps and start to refine that with the missions we've got and, and move forward. So, so with that, I think we'll open it up to some questions from you, and, uh, and we'll see. So, all right, thank you. So we need to moderate. Yeah. yeah. So we have, we have time for probably, uh, I don't know, five or six questions. Yep. Can, can we get a microphone or something? Oops. I can just ask. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Fine. I'm interested, interested to know why um, the advantages of two different um, destinations in terms of this near-term planning as opposed to a single de destination, either the moon or an asteroid. What, what advantages come from having two different places to go, particularly in light of what's already been done uh, toward the moon? Again, I think if you if you look at it uh, and the purpose of these documents, and Hasegawa can add some, the purpose was to, to build a framework for agencies to start, start thinking about how they want to contribute to these activities. So by having two options or two, two roadmap paths, we, we give a broader range of cooperation available to the partner agencies to contribute to. If we would have down-selected to one, that might have taken some, uh, some agencies that didn't have quite the capability or, or quite the uh, investment and work completed that they wouldn't be able to contribute to some of the larger goals. But by having two, uh, the moon is a little more reachable. In some cases, we can do some things there. So there may be some... Um, some opportunities for nations and agencies to go participate in that act activity that they would have been left out of if we didn't show the two paths. So I think we get a richer discussion of what agencies want to uh, contribute, what the framework is as we go forward by carrying multiple paths and not down selecting too fast to a single option. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah, add some small information about uh, our discussions. Uh, we selected the uh, the many discussions continuing more than one year, uh, five or six options uh, going. Our total goal is a mouse, but uh, uh, they uh, the, to reach the goal we need uh, some kind of the, uh, very critical point, a long way uh, to go back, kind of the uh, le uh, go and back back backward, but uh, within the two or three years for a long time by the humans and also. Uh, 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 landing sequence surface and uh, soft landing on the surface and going back 
those uh, activities. Also, radiation, uh, very b big radiation, strict, uh, uh, severe radiation uh, are affecting by, to the human, especially crew for the more than three years. So it's okay for them. And also a long duration for the deep space habitat that must be protected also to a three backup systems you need. So which uh, those uh, uh, critical uh, element must be verified by the, uh, some kind of the, uh, space uh, activities. So we uh, can use the lunar surface and landing or near, near Earth orbit, asteroid, near Earth orbit, uh, or some uh, deep space L1, L2, or something like that. So uh, we can uh, uh, finally uh, we uh, uh, finally found out uh, two ways, so moon next or uh, asteroid next, but it depends on uh, uh, capability, uh, uh, how uh, capability itself. Now, uh, uh, currently, uh, we are not approaching to the NEO uh, by the human uh, spacecraft. It's not possible, but uh, Luna, it's okay surface and uh, landing or L1, L2 long duration, maybe challenging uh, based on ISS uh, modules, but uh, still uh, uh, a technology gap. So finally, uh, at this moment, August time frame, we must select the two ways, which is best. Nobody knows that. Thank you. Another question? Well, I, I will say that in the one in the one chart that we showed, right, we show what the science community is doing in those areas, right. So they are clearly pursuing those missions for pure scientific kind of reasons. The the Mars Science Laboratory is geared towards a certain scientific objectives, and what we're trying to do is to add and augment those. Some things we may need for the human aspects. So, for example, we have a radiation monitor on Mars. Uh, 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 surface uh, or science laboratory, and, and that radiation detector will benefit the uh, scientists to understand what the radiation environment is on Mars, but it also benefits us directly so we know what the radiation environment is. We've, we've talked about potentially turning that instrument on during the transit from Earth to Mars, and we could actually gain some insight into what the uh, radiation environment is for the humans during that transit to Mars. So I would say that there's, a, there's clearly a scientific piece of this from the science mission director to the pure science side. And then we're focused a little more on the, on the human capabilities side that, that moves forward. But I think there's a nat natural synergy between the two. And we've got to keep them in sync that we're not pursuing just the exploration aspect of the human or we're not just pure science. There's, a, there's an applied kind of science piece, and then there's also the more pure science piece. Yeah, a little bit uh, uh, in, in our activities, uh, we asked uh, uh, scientist members uh, involved in the discussions, uh, uh, JAXA and those, or NASA or the other European space agencies, uh, uh, requested to the science team to go involved. But the science teams are uh, divided, uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, lunar or uh, asteroid uh, uh, materials or the, some kind of the solar systems. It depends on uh, their uh, intention. So uh, uh, in the lunar uh, landing position, the, uh, in the case of the lunar landing positions, uh, there are so many uh, uh, opinions by the uh, JAXA teams, uh, various teams, and the NASA teams, the European teams. Uh, uh, the destination is uh, it's variety field, it's a north or a midfield or a south pole or a backside. And also, NEO, uh, near us, objectives uh, go. Uh, their uh, science teams also, their expertise field is, uh, is spread wide. So, uh, uh, those uh, information is involved in this uh, uh, roadmap, but not uh, finalized <laughs> what is the best. But anyway, this uh, product is the first pitch or first level to present it and uh, be criticized by the, those science uh, objectives or technical uh, technology or s some other field. So one year from now uh, is uh, those uh, uh, process uh, are required to, to, to be and many people. A question from my side. Among the various critical technology key issues, have you found something in the data to humans? 
Yeah, what, what, what he was basically asking was, have we found any problems or technology that's not, uh, that's related to the humans, either psychological or whatever, that, that is missing from the overall capabilities, activities? And, and, and if I kind of sort back and look at all that, I think clearly one thing we really need to understand is the radiation environment and protecting the, the human in the radiation environment on, on transits for these long distances. I think we'll discover some things um, with the time delay and the, the distance of to Mars that'll be some psychological considerations of our crews and the way we make that activities up. Uh, again, some of those can be done fairly well at space station or with some analogies. You know, we've done, the, the Russians have done the Mars 500 activity, which provided some information about what isolation is like for 500 days. They're, they're getting ready to return here. That's been very beneficial to help with some of those ideas. But I think there's clearly some things that are there that are unique to the human that, that will be different than if you just had pure robotic spacecraft. So they will definitely drive some capabilities that, that need to be done. Thanks. Okay, thank you for your attention. I would like to invite you to the next plenary events in a few minutes at 9. We will move from far future, from exploration, to possibility of application of space technology to improvement the quality of life on, uh, in Africa. Thank you. Good morning.